This week on Open Falls Training, we'll be covering how to create a virtual machine inside of VirtualBox. Welcome back to Open Falls Training. I'm your host, Matthew Williams. And today we'll be covering how to create a virtual machine inside of VirtualBox. Now, this won't actually be installing the OS yet, but I figured it'd be best to cover the basics of how to create a virtual machine before we moved on, and then in the next episode, we'll cover how to install a Linux operating system inside of the virtual machine we create this time, and then after that, the plan will be to go back to VirtualBox and show you some of the extra features of VirtualBox, things that you will want to know along the way to help make things more useful for you in the long run. So that's our plan for right now. So let's go ahead and switch over to our Windows desktop here. And as you can see, I've already got VirtualBox started up here with nothing here. Now let's go ahead and kind of get me out of the way here and let's just focus in on what we're doing here. So as you see, we've got Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager already started. So we'll go ahead to create a new virtual machine. We'll click New. And let's go ahead and zoom in here just a little bit. And during the process, it gives us the option to name our system and to tell it what operating system we're going to be using. So for this, let's go ahead and name this OFT you know, Linux test system. That way we know this is the system we're working on together to learn things. And as you can see, it gives us the option, sorry about that scrolling around, I'm still getting used to this Zoom thing, but gives us the option to choose what type of operating system and you know what version it is. So if you click the drop down, you can see that it gives us the option of Microsoft Windows, Linux, Solaris, BSD, IBM OS2, Mac OS X, and other. Now, some warning on the Mac OS X capability. VirtualBox does have the ability to let you run Mac OS X inside of a virtual machine if and only if you're using a Mac computer. So you have to run VirtualBox on a Mac to be able to virtualize OS X. But let's go ahead and choose Linux here. And version, we've got a lot of cho choices there. You know, there's a lot of different options of Linux to, we can choose from. I'm going to go ahead and put it as Ubuntu 32-bit because the next time we work on this, we're going to be using Ubuntu. So now that that's done, we go ahead and we click Next to continue. And here we now have the option to set how much memory we want to give the machine. I have a couple recommendations here. Minimum, I think you should always give it two gigs of memory. Now, to give it two gigs, you have to tell it 2,048 megabytes. Now, that's my recommendation for minimum RAM to ever give anything inside a virtual box. But if you're working with a very powerful system, say you have eight gigs of RAM on your system, I would recommend, if you can, give it, you know, 4,096 megabytes in this case. The more RAM you can give something, the better it's going to work out for you. So once you have the RAM set to 2,048 megabytes, go ahead and click uh, Next to continue. Now we're to the point where we can create a hard drive. Very important. If we want to, you know, do an install, we have to have something where we can do the install. 
Now, when it creates a hard drive, it's actually just creating a file on your system. Since this is the first time you've run it, you don't have any of these around. So go ahead and click create a virtual hard disk now and click create to continue. And we've got a lot of options here on what kind of hard disk file type we can use. Some of these are specific to certain uh, systems. So VirtualBox has a format it likes to use. There's the VMDK, which is a um, used by another company, you know, so there's a lot of options here. And really, unless you have a good reason, you're going to be using this, you know, passing this file to a friend who's, you know, say using, you know, VMware Workstation, the best bet is to go ahead and leave it as a VDI and click Next. And now it gives you the option of what type of disk it wants to create, whether it's a dynamically allocated or fixed size. Dynamically allocated means that since we told it to create, or since we're going to tell it to create a file of a certain size, it'll allow that file to grow to that size. So say we tell it to create an eight gigabyte file. It'll only take up a couple hundred megs to begin with, but then grow to the eight gigabytes. This has some advantages of keeping, you know, space free until you are starting to use it. But it's not as fast as the other option of a fixed size. Fixed size go ahead and create goes ahead and creates an eight gigabyte file and right then and there allocates that full space. So my recommendation is to go ahead like I have here, click fixed size and then cre click next to create a fixed size disk. And here we are with the option to create or to tell how big we want. For our test system here, I think eight gigabytes is a perfectly good size. So, you know, if you want to keep this around longer, you could make it larger. If you have less disk space, you could make it smaller, but eight gigs is really about the smallest you should make it. So set it to eight gigabytes and click create. And as you can see, it'll take, you know, a couple minutes here to create things. That is one of the small disadvantages of a fixed size disk over a dynamically allocated one. Fixed size, as we can see here, takes a few minutes to create. So when that's done, I'm going to speed through this. And when it's done, I'll be back to finish the process. All right, and now with the hard drive creation completed, we are dumped back to our main screen of Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager. And in the next session, we'll go over how to attach an ISO to our brand new virtual machine and begin the process of installing an operating system. So as you can see, you know, this whole process is a pretty easy thing to get going. It just takes a little more time. I hope, you know, you've learned something along the way and that in the next episode, we'll cover how to install Linux inside of our virtual machine. So I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And I want to be sure to thank all the people who've helped bring this project together, everyone who has donated to OpenFOSS training to help make this a reality. So I thank you for taking your time and I will see you next time.